we are unable to determine whether the state is true or false. Now fuzzy refers to something which is unclear or vague. Now fuzzy logic in AI provides valuable flexibility for reasoning. And in today's session, we will learn about this logic and its implementation in artificial intelligence. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session we will talk about the fuzzy logic in AI. Now before we begin the session, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first we will talk about what is this fuzzy logic actually. Then we will move on and see why do we use fuzzy logic. Next up we will discuss the entire architecture of fuzzy logic and how it actually works. Next up we will see the membership function and then we will also see how fuzzy logic is different from probability. Now after this we will have a look at the different applications of fuzzy logic in our everyday life and then we will also talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of this particular logic. And finally we will take an example and understand fuzzy logic in a better way. Now before we begin the session, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates from Edureka. Also, if you are looking for some online certification on artificial intelligence and deep learning, check out the description box below. So what is this fuzzy logic actually? Now fuzzy logic is a method of reasoning that resembles the human reasoning. Now this approach is similar to how humans perform decision making and it involves all other intermediate possibilities between a yes and a no. So let's take an example. Suppose there's a question asked as is it cold? Now in the boolean logic the answer can either be yes or no that is it only takes the value to be as 1 or 0. But when it comes to fuzzy logic and if you ask the same question that is it cold you will get different answers like it's very much cold or it's little cold or very less. So you will also get the intermediate possibilities between a yes and a no. So the computer won't just take the values as 0 and 1. So this is all about fuzzy logic and this is the difference between the boolean logic and the fuzzy logic. In boolean we only use the 0 and 1 or the yes and no values but in fuzzy logic we have intermediate values between this yes and no or 0 and 1. Now the conventional logic block that a computer understands takes precise input and produces a definite output as true or false which is equivalent to a human being's yes or no. Now the fuzzy logic was invented by Lord Fee who observed that unlike computers humans have a different range of possibilities between yes and no. So talking about certain possibilities there can be a certainly yes, possibly yes, cannot say possibly no or certainly no. We just do not say only yes or no. We do have certainty or possibilities at times. Now the fuzzy logic works on the levels of possibilities of input to achieve a definite output. Now talking about the implementation of this particular logic, it can be implemented in systems with different sizes and capabilities such as the microcontrollers, large network or workstation based systems. Also, it can be implemented in hardware, software or a combination of both. So this was about the fuzzy logic and how it gives you the values of different possibilities between 0 and 1 or a yes and no. Now moving on, let's see why do we actually use this fuzzy logic. Now generally we use this fuzzy logic system for both commercial and practical purposes such as it controls machines and also the consumer products. And if not accurate reasoning, it at least provides acceptable reasoning. So at times when you say certainly yes or possibly yes, it's not giving an accurate reasoning whether the answer is yes or no. But at least it gives an acceptable reasoning where you are saying that it might be or it can happen, something like that. Now this also helps in dealing with the uncertainty in engineering. So in case you're unsure or you do not know if the answer can be yes or no, you can find a middle path that is where it helps in dealing with the uncertainty here. So these are the different reasons for which we actually need to use fuzzy logic. So now that you know about the fuzzy logic in AI and why we use it, let's move on and understand the architecture of this particular logic. Now talking about the fuzzy logic architecture, it consists of four main parts. Now the first one is the rules, then we have fuzzy fire, then we have defuzzifier and intelligence. 
Now talking about rules, it contains all the rules and the if then conditions offered by the experts to control the decision making system. Now the recent update in the fuzzy theory provides different effective methods for the design and tuning of fuzzy controllers. Usually these developments reduce the number of fuzzy rules as well. Now next we have the fuzzy fire. Now here fuzzification takes place. So this step actually converts the inputs or the crisp numbers into fuzzy sets. So you can measure the crisp inputs by sensors and pass them into the control system for further processing. Now this fuzzification splits the input signal into five steps like LP, MP, S, MN and LN. We will also see how these five things uh, work in the next section. But for now the LP is where X is large positive, MP is where it's medium positive, S stands for small. Then we have MN which is medium negative and LN which is large negative. We will see how these things work in the next section. For now talking about the inference engine which is the intelligence, it determines the degree of match between fuzzy input and the rules. According to the input field, it will decide the rules that are to be fired, combining the fired rules from the control actions. So here you can see that from rules we go to the intelligence and from fuzzy fire we have the fuzzy input set going into the inference engine. Now this will combine the fired rules and form the control actions and from here we will get our fuzzy output set. So once we get this fuzzy output set, we go to the defuzzifier where defuzzification takes place. Now the defuzzification process converts the fuzzy sets into a crisp value. Now there are different types of techniques available and you need to select the best suited one with an expert system. So here first we have a crisp input going to the fuzzifier where fuzzification takes place and the crisp input is converted into a fuzzy input set. This fuzzy input set passes through the inference engine and we have a fuzzy output set here. Now this fuzzy output set goes through defuzzification where again we get a crisp output. So this was about the architecture of fuzzy logic in AI. Now let's move on and understand what is the membership function. Now the membership function is a graph that defines how each point in the input space is mapped to membership value between 0 and 1. It allows you to quantify linguistic terms and represent a fuzzy set graphically. Now a membership function for a fuzzy set A on the universe of discourse X is defined as mu A colon X which implies to 0 comma 1. Now this quantifies the degree of membership of the element in X to the fuzzy set A and the X axis represents the universe of discourse whereas the Y axis represents the degrees of membership in the 0 1 interval. Now there can be a multiple membership function applicable to fuzzify a numerical value. Simple membership functions are used as the complex functions that do not add precision in the output. Now here we will discuss about the membership functions for LP, MP, S, MN and LN. So now you know LN is large negative, MN is medium negative, S is small, MP is medium positive and LP is large positive. So here for the X and Y axis we have the membership functions and input voltage. Now here the triangular membership function shapes are most common among various other membership function shapes. The input to 5 level fuzzifier varies from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. Hence the corresponding output also changes. So based on these volts, the value for the membership function will also change. So you can see the graph where from minus 10 to plus 10 volt, there has been a great variation in the graph of input voltage and membership function. Now this fuzzy logic is often confused with probability. So let's move on and see what are the differences between fuzzy logic and probability. Now in fuzzy logic, we actually try to capture the essential concept of vagueness. We are not taking an exact value like 0 or 1. We are considering the vagueness here where there is a certainty or a possibility. But probability is associated with events and not facts and those events will either occur or not occur. So there's no such concept of vagueness here. It's just about events which will either take place or not. Now fuzzy logic also captures the meaning of partial truth. 
where sometimes we say possibly yes or possibly no or certainly yes, certainly no. But probability theory captures partial knowledge. It has nothing to do with the truth. It only deals with the partial knowledge. Also, fuzzy logic takes truth degrees as a mathematical basis, whereas probability is a mathematical model of ignorance. So I hope these differences will help you understand how fuzzy logic is different from probability and you will not confuse these two terms and use it in place of the other. Mostly probability is used for the mathematical models whereas fuzzy logic takes the truth degrees and also it's just the partial truth we are considering with the help of fuzzy logic but probability is completely a mathematical term with partial knowledge only. So now that you've understood how fuzzy logic is different from probability, let's move on and talk about some of the applications of fuzzy logic in our everyday life. Now talking about the applications, it is used in various fields such as automotive systems, domestic goods, environment control, etc. And some of the common applications include the use in the aerospace field for altitude control of spacecraft and satellites. So fuzzy logic definitely plays an important role in the aerospace field. Not just that, it also controls the speed and traffic in the automotive systems, which is definitely very important. It is also used for decision making support systems and personal evaluation in the large company business. It definitely helps you make certain decisions where you cannot just go for yes or no. You need certain other possibilities in between. It also controls the pH drying chemical distillation process in the chemical industry. Now the fuzzy logic is also used in the natural language processing and various intensive applications in artificial intelligence. So it helps in the natural language processing where we just do not need a boolean logic of zero or one. We need to understand what we are converting and understand the sentiments and possibilities as well. Not just that, it is extensively used in modern control systems such as the expert systems. And also, fuzzy logic mimics how a person would make decisions only much faster. So suppose somebody asks you a question and sometimes the answer may not be just a yes or no, you might have to take other decisions as well. So fuzzy logic thinks like a human being, just that it works a little faster. So you can also use it with neural networks. So these were some of the common applications of the fuzzy logic. Now like every other thing it also has certain advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of fuzzy logic. Talking about the advantages, the structure of this logic system is very easy and understandable. So you do not need to scratch your head too much to understand the logic. It's just some of the possibilities between a yes and a no. Now fuzzy logic is widely used for commercial and practical purposes because it's easy to understand and also it helps in a lot of decision making. It helps you control the machines and consumer products as well. Not just that you can deal with the uncertainty in engineering as we have discussed before. This is one reason why fuzzy logic is mostly used because it helps you deal with the uncertainty in any engineering. You can find various possibilities in middle. Also, it is mostly robust as no precise inputs are required here. And if the feedback sensor stops working, you can program it into the situation. Not just that, you can also easily modify it to improve or alter the system performance and inexpensive sensors can be used which helps you to keep the overall system cost and complexity low. You don't need to spend much on a fuzzy logic system either. So this will definitely help you reduce the overall system cost and also it will be effective and efficient. So these were the different advantages. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Like every other system, it also has pros and cons. We have talked about the pros. Now let's talk about the cons here. So fuzzy logic is not always accurate. As there's no definite output or definite value here, we have certain possibilities. So it might not give you the accurate value all the time. Also, it cannot recognize machine learning as well as neural network type patterns. Not just that verification and validation of a fuzzy knowledge based system needs extensive testing with hardware. Obviously, because it's not giving you an accurate result and it's giving you certain possibilities. 
So you need to validate and verify while giving your input and for that you need extensive testing with the hardware. Then setting the exact fuzzy rules and membership functions is also quite a difficult task and at times the fuzzy logic is confused with probability theory. We have already seen the comparison between these two and understood how these are different but often people who are new to this get confused between fuzzy logic and probability theory which creates a lot of confusion and this hampers the work as well. So these were some of the advantages and disadvantages of using the fuzzy logic in AI. Now that you have understood how fuzzy logic works and what it is actually, let's take a real time example and understand this in a better way. Now taking an example, the design of a fuzzy logic system starts with a set of membership functions for each input and a set for each output. A set of rules is then applied to the membership functions to yield a crisp output value. Now here we are taking an example of process control and understand the fuzzy logic better. So for process control we have temperature and speed. Now in step one we have temperature as the input and the fan speed as the output. So here we have created a set of membership functions for each input. A membership function is simply a graphical representation of the fuzzy variable sets. Now for this particular example, we will use three fuzzy sets that is cold, warm and hot. And then we will create a membership function for each of these three sets of temperature. So here you can see that for X and Y axis, we have percent and temperature and we have three fuzzy sets. So the first one is cold, then we have normal or warm and finally hot. Now in the next step, we will use the three fuzzy sets for the output where we will have slow, medium and fast. So for the input we had temperature but for output we have taken the speed that is the fan speed. So in step two we will use three fuzzy sets for the output which is slow, medium and fast. Now a set of functions is created for each output set just as for the input sets. It's similar to what we have done for our input just that here we are taking the speed instead of temperature. So for speed we have slow, medium and fast. Now in the final step we have our membership functions defined. We are creating the rules that will define how the membership functions will be applied to the final system. So let's create three rules for this particular system. So if the temperature is hot, then the speed will be fast. If it's warm, it will be medium and if it's cold, it will be slow. So here in this graph, you can see that according to these three rules, we are comparing the input with the output and based on the temperature, we are calculating the speed here. Now these rules apply to the membership functions to produce the crisp output value to drive the system. So that's for an input value of around 50 degrees, we intersect the membership functions. So here we are applying two rules as the intersection occurs on both functions. So you can extend the intersection points to the output functions to produce an intersecting point. You can then truncate the output functions at the height of the intersecting points. Now this was a very simple explanation of how the fuzzy logic systems work. But in real working systems, there would be many inputs and the possibility of several outputs. Now this would result in a fairly complex set of functions and many more rules. But I hope with this example, you have understood how fuzzy logic actually works and what is the difference between a fuzzy logic and probability. So with this, we have come to the end of today's session and I hope you understood what is fuzzy logic and how it works. So don't forget to let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning.